hang up and try again. So we're going to talk about Camilla Harris. She spoke recently at Eastway Middle School on January 11th in Charlotte, North Carolina, and she was addressing to the students um, gun violence. And it, it inspired me to look up the education of her. So I did some investigating and this is what I found. Camilla Harris uh, graduated from Harvard in 1986 with a degree in political science and economics. Harris then returned to California to attend a law school, the University of California, Hastings College of the Law through its Legal Education Opportunity Program, L-E-O-P. Let's explain what that is. I've got a lot of notes on this, so I apologize for looking down, but I want to get the information right for you. Uh, UC Law SF created a Legal Education Opportunity Program, L-E-O-P, in 1969 to make an outstanding legal education accessible to those who came from a disadvantaged educational, economic, social, or physical background. UC Law SF understands that being subject to a significant adversity may have prevented applicants from attending numerically measured goals that fully reflect their motivation, talent, and academic and professional ability. In addition to completing the general application for admission, those applying through LEOP application supplement and are strongly encouraged to submit a second personal essay detailing the adversity they have encountered. Now, the adversity that Camilla Harris experienced sounds tragic. Listen to this. Other than her parents getting divorced when she was seven, what adversity did Camilla Harris overcome? Her parents both earned doctorates. Her mother was a cancer researcher. Her father was a Stanford professor. I'm guessing the whole adversity spin was just added to the 1996 Proposition 209 that made racial affirmative action illegal in California government institutions like Hastings Law School. Harris went to Hastings from 1986 to 1989, when it was more or less legal to have affirmative action in California government as long as you didn't use the Q word, the Q word quota. Don't use the Q word quota. So what I've learned is that Camilla Harris actually got her education on being a diversity person. Now, she's constantly talking about racism and you know this country needs to you know, you know, deal with it and it's in the country and it's still going on. But she, because of policies of her color, of her skin, her nationalities, was able to get into school because of it. At a time when the Democratic Party, some support among Latinos, among black voters, Nikki Haley, mm. who like you, is of Southeast Asian descent, said this week that this country has never been a racist country. So let me ask you directly, <laughs> do you agree that America has never been a racist country? You know, I, first of all, and, and I think everyone agrees, we all agree, um, the issue of race in America is not something that should be the subject of a soundbite. Mm. Right. The history of racism in America should never be the subject of a soundbite or a, a, a question that is meant to elicit a one-sentence answer. But there is no denying that we have in our history as a nation racism and that racism has played a role in the history of our nation. And when I think about it, I, I think we all would agree that while um, it is part of our past and, and, the, and we see vestiges of it today, we should also be committed collectively to not letting it define the future of our country. So isn't that racism? I think it's racism. I mean, if you're gonna determine somebody by the color of their skin, disadvantaged or rich, both, both of them still get the same advantages of the color of their skin, that is, you know, racism, racism. There's no reverse racism. If you're being picked by your color of your skin, that is what we stopped doing after Jim Crow. I mean, that was a whole outrage and everything that happened with the, the civil rights movement is 
we were working to get together, you know, white people and black people. We were doing great. We were getting closer and closer. Obama got in for eight years and did not do what we had hoped. He was elected uh, by predominantly white people. America felt great about it. And he actually separated us even more and more. So again, the Democrats want to separate us. We are not separate. We are all equal in the eyes of God. We have to keep that in mind as we're talking to each other. We need to love each other and we don't need to hate each other by the, by the way we look. We got to try to, we're always going to judge because it's like a self-protection thing. But ultimately, it doesn't mean we have to just do a broad stroke to everybody in a specific race or color. The more we join up, and, and unify, the better our country is going to be, the better our lives are going to be, and we'll be better to each other. All right, so prepare yourself. I always warn you about these shows that we don't watch, so I don't want to lose you. <laughs> but this is The View. Dun, dun, dun. And of course, she got egged on by um, Joy, uh, and she asked Kamala Harris about how she feels about is she scared to, you know, be in this election against President Trump? And this is what she said. Now, are, are you scared, first of all, what could happen if Trump ever became, God forbid, president again? And what are you going to do to stop the crazies? I am scared as heck. <laughs> yeah. Which is why I'm traveling our country. You know, there's an old saying that there are only two ways to run for office either without an opponent or scared. So on all of those points, yes, we should all be scared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as we know- Yeah, we shouldn't be in fear, right? But of course they're gonna play that up and they're gonna cackle and laugh and everything. And they're gonna enjoy it because they wanna make it like scary orange man bad. But she's basically, you know, she tried to backtrack it a little bit later, but she basically was saying that she's scared of, of President Trump. But, you know, what's she got to be scared of? I mean, she's got the media behind her. She's got the, you know, DC's like 98% Democrat. There's lots of things that she has going for her that she doesn't need to be scared of President Trump. They just want to do the orange man bad thing. Again, TDS, Trump derangement syndrome, like I mentioned in the other videos. Sorry I had to put you through that, but I think it had to be seen just because it's it's so fake. I mean, we have to admit that, right? I mean, you are seeing that if you're watching this video, how fake it is. If you're not, just keep watching. We'll eventually, not, not just this video, but more and more videos here. And I, I hope you'll start to see there's a way that we can unify. I'm going to just say this and read this, even though it's a short quote, because it's just so hard to believe. But this is what she said. We've got to earn re-election. There is no question We've got to be on the road. Camilla Harris on the road. Imagine her campaigning, how painful that's gonna be. Joe Biden, well, he did he did his whole campaign from the basement uh, and there was like six or seven people that showed up to his rallies outside and they parked all the cars and they did all the separation like by 20 feet by people. You know, it was obvious he was just covering that nobody was gonna come. But she's saying they gotta hit the road. <laughs> this is gonna be entertaining, am I wrong? I mean, come on. Joe Biden and Camilla Harris hitting the road. What are the chances of that happening when she's saying this? So there's going to be an excuse for something, that they're handling the border or something. But I've got other video clips on her talking about the border and blaming the Republicans, but made my head explode. I picked up all the pieces and here I am today. Please click, subscribe, and share, and post um, the videos. It helps out with the algorithms. I really am grateful for your interest. If you're still watching this video, you've hung in there till the end. I know you're a true supporter and I'm grateful. Website's below uh, for all of your needs. And uh, this is William Whitty signing off. Know that you're appreciated and God bless you.